What was your finest moment of revenge? When I was 11 years old, I was bullied by a 12-year-old boy. He would steal things from my lunch every day. I got sick of it and decided to do something about it. One day, I brought a super hot pepper in my lunch and pretended to be really excited about it. Sure enough, the boy comes over, snatches it from my hands, and pops it in his mouth. He practically exploded in pain, writhing around the floor, unable to handle the heat. I calmly looked at him and told him that drinking a nice glass of cold water would help immensely. He did so. This promptly magnified the pain 100 times. He never stole food from me again. I regret nothing. Driving to drop someone off, my radar detector went off. Saw a cop sitting in a parking lot, dropped off my friend, and headed back. The whole way, some butt is tailgating me. Speed limit is 40, I'm doing 45, and he's so close I can see his headlights. We come up to a traffic circle, and he tries to pass me on the right. I sped up, and he kept trying. We hit about 80 to 90 with him on the shoulder. Come up the crest of a hill, and I know the cop is right on the other side. I hit the brakes, and he flew up over the hill, had to be doing 90 in a 40. I even stopped to let the cop out of the parking spot. Most satisfying thing ever. My first real boyfriend, we kissed instead of just holding hands, kissed another girl and dumped me for her when I was a freshman in high school. She had actively pursued him, although she knew he had a girlfriend, so I blamed her rather than him. I know, I know. Fast forward four years. I was a volleyball player throughout college. In the offseason, I played in a city women's league and a co-ed league as an outside hitter. My team played a new team with a familiar face. She didn't recognize me, different high schools, but I immediately recognized her. My team's setter kept giving me amazing sets, and I kept slamming the ball over the net, just waiting for my shot. Finally, she was in the back row, and my setter set me up. I hit the ball, and the boyfriend stealer stepped into the hit. It bounced off her foot and went straight up into her face and broke her nose. This may seem small, but it was the most satisfying thing I have ever done. When I was in the seventh grade, I sat behind a jerk who hated me and enjoyed being annoying. Every single goddamn day, he would lean back in his chair and hit the front of my desk over and over again. If I was trying to write something, he would do it even harder. So one day, I decided enough was enough, and in the middle of a lesson, he started again. So I waited, and right as he was leaning his chair back fast, trying to knock my desk hard, I pulled it back. Without my desk behind him, his chair tipped right over and he hit the ground hard. I can still clearly remember him whispering, You B beneath the laughter of the whole class and the teacher yelling at him to get up. The look on his face was a mixture of shock, embarrassment, and pure rage as he looked up at me from the floor. Bastard never effed with me again. A crappy repair shop in Moab, Utah messed up our car which left us stranded in a nearby national park. We called and demanded they tow the vehicle in, and while they said they'd come get us, they never did. When we talked with park rangers, they were quite familiar with the shop, the biggest in town and with a terrible reputation. We were on our honeymoon and had more time on our hands than I imagine most travelers do. We went to the shop, demanded a full refund, and when they refused, we sat out front on the curb in our camp chairs for two days with homemade protest signs. I was overwhelmed with the support we got from locals who honked and waved, stopped and chatted with us, and shared their own stories of horror. The owner called the cops on us, but the joke was on him. We'd already notified the police we'd be protesting, and were well within our rights in doing so. In the end, the shop owner refunded all our money and left visibly distressed when we told him that even with the refund, we weren't sure we were ready to leave town. Eventually we did, but not before filing complaints with the Better Business Bureau and every review site we could find. They'd already been booted from the Chamber of Commerce. We ended up becoming friends with an awesome local mechanic and having a great story to tell. Justice was served. And without a tinge of guilt. When I was 12 years old, a kid beat me up at a birthday party for reasons unknown. Four years later, the kid is a pitcher, and a very good one at that, for his school in the playoffs. I was playing for the other team. After going 0-3 to start the game, I hit a walk-off home run off him to advance to the next round. Kid actually started crying on the mound. I don't think I've ever had a bigger smile than I did in that moment. Still have the ball in my apartment at college. Beating the crap out of the man who abused and beat my mother for six years. Seven years later and she still has no idea. Edit. Obligatory thanks for the gold, stranger. Recently posted this, but long story short, a kid I was friends with hit me in the balls three times in one night. He then called me a wee baby and got in my face. He tried to make me flinch by half-swinging at me. 
I didn't flinch, but instead headbutted him with everything I had, crushed his nose, blood pouring out of his face. I had a tiny cut in the center of my forehead, with one line of blood running down my face. I looked effing psychotic, but bad A. Also, F you for that, David. When I was a kid, probably four or five years old, I was watching Dumbo with my neighbor. The elephants on parade part was scary as all hell to me back then, and I peed my pants. My neighbor told everyone in my pre-K class and would not stop calling me the pants peer for weeks. Finally, one day, I slept over at her house and took a pair of her pants out of the closet, put them on, and peed in them. I woke her up to show her, and that's the story of how I became the two-times pants peer. TLDR got revenge on a girl by putting her pants on and peeing in them. I ground up laxatives and tainted all my kitchen fridge food with it to figure out which of my seven roommates was eating all my food, while I survived off a secret stash in my mini-fridge. I found out who did it very, very quickly. I closed on selling my house, but the buyers were real a-holes. Insane demands and stupid crap. I was fed up, so on move-out day, I bought a couple of wasp traps and put the attractant into a hole in the garage drywall. Effers. Telling a group of baseball buddies that were picking on my younger brother that Snape kills Dumbledore in Half-Blood Prince after realizing they had all just started it. Edit. Thanks for the gold. Expect a comment from you slash the jesticle. My college roommate had a sketchy friend he would invite over. My textbook was stolen the weekend before my final. I went to the bookstore and found the book. I had note cards that I used as bookmarks still in the book. I texted my roommate's friend and made up a story that the bookstore was going to press charges unless he gave the money back. He confessed over the phone and told me to meet him at his place to get the money. When I got there, he was smoking a bong. After taking the money, I poured the bong over his head and told him to never come to my place ever again. Back in the summer of 09, me and my girlfriend were going pretty strong. Anyway, I found out she was effing this guy on the side. She admitted it and said she was sorry, and I dumped her. Anyway, I didn't know the guy, but I remembered his name. One night at a party a few months later, I got introduced to a guy I thought was him. I slightly worked out it was him. I'm not a guy to hold a grudge generally, but this was something else. I didn't want to do anything to him, but when I walked into a bedroom to take a phone call, and there he was passed out drunk on the bed. I didn't know what to do, but I knew I had too good an opportunity to pass it up. I was pretty drunk at the time, but the first thing I thought of was to take a dump on him. I passed it off as a stupid idea, but I couldn't think of anything else, so I went with it. So I went with it. I left the party just after and haven't seen or heard from him since. Not a day goes by I don't think about it. Needless to say, I haven't told anyone about this in real life. I'm not sure, but is say vengeance was a dish best served crappy. When I was 16, I was heartbroken by a girl who basically decided to F someone else after we were in love, and I just used it as motivation to eat better and lose weight. I saw her a couple years later, and it looked like she gained as much as I lost, 80 pounds. Felt so good. X cheated on me, moved out, but moved out slowly over time, which meant I still lived with a lot of her stuff. Some of her clothes were left in the closet. I cut teeny tiny corners off every sleeve but barely enough to be noticeable. You'd have to think you were going insane to notice it, but then again, over time, each sleeve did look somewhat off. She eventually asked me about it months later. I denied everything. I regret nothing. There was the kid in junior high that was always in my crap. Not a bully, but just two parts D-head and one part B. Constantly trolling me, following me around, talking crap. I tried turning the other cheek, being nice and crap like that, but it was just not working. Fast forward high school, we are both on the wrestling team. I'm like one weight class above him, so we have lots and lots of close contact, and he was still being a D. Double leg takedown. Scooped that crap head up in the air and dented the mat with him. Coach got peed and made me do extra cardio after practice. Felt really effing good. During our 100 multiple choice law exam, I wrote all my answers on the original exam page and colored in wrong answers on the Scantron sheet. The girl who copied me since day one thought she was going to pass this exam worth 30% of our final mark. She looked over and copied almost each of my Scantron answer, then guessed a few, handed it in, and left for the winter break. I erased all my old answers, put the correct answers in, handed it in, and left. I got 71 out of 100 and barely managed to pass that class. 
I'll find out what she got on Tuesday when I maybe see her with a gun at my locker. When I was in fourth grade, I was pushed around a lot by a kid who thought he was hot crap. I told my parents, I told my teacher, they told the teacher and the principal, no avail. So, one day on the stairs, he kicks the back of my shoe, making it pop off and fall. I turn and punch him in the stomach. He keeled over and rolled slash fell down about five to six stairs to the next landing. I didn't even get in trouble, and even though he is still an a-hole, he never dared to touch me again. So, my grandfather was driving, and an obviously drunk man threw a rock and shattered his windshield. My grandfather talked to him and told him, If you give me your real number, I'll only have you pay for half of the windshield, or we can figure something out. The guy turned out to give him a fake number. A year later, my grandfather picks up a guy from Park and Ride, carpooling. He happens to be the man that shattered his windshield. They're driving on the freeway and the guy doesn't recognize him. He's being rude and talking on his phone. My grandpa asks to see his phone and throws it out the window. The guy freaks out and my grandpa goes, remember me? He then made him get out of the car. Canadian Air Cadets, summer camp, got picked on and things stolen from by one other cadet with issues for duration of the camp. Was allowed to go buy sundries at a local pharmacy once a week. On final day of camp, we did precision parade drills for friends, family, dignitaries, etc. Sort of like graduating from boot camp. A formal event where we were expected to be at our best. Swapped the contents of a package of chiclets for packets of phenomint, laxative gum. Sure enough, Bully takes the gum as I open the package in front of him. A while later, we are called up for drill. Since it was hot and in full uniform, if we experienced exhaustion or were about to faint, we were to drop to one knee and wait till we'd taken out a formation. He and one other guy dropped to one knee partway through. I don't know if he crapped himself, but I like to think he did. My friend Roman had just bought a brand new shiny bike. We were taking it for a spin around the neighborhood and stopped off at my woman's house. We left the bikes on her big porch and went inside. Not five minutes later, we went outside and my friend's new bike was missing. We promptly hop in my car and start to search Eugene for the bikes. After about an hour, we were giving up and thought we'd better check the central bus station one last time. Sure enough, there was 16 year, roughly, with my friend's bike and stickers already removed. We pulled over and confronted him. He said he found the bike in a ditch and promptly handed it back. I was putting the bike in the car while my friend fumed and looked up this kid up and down. Right as we were about to head out, he yells, Give me effing jacket. He made the kid give him the jacket he was wearing is punishment for stealing the bike. We ended up finding lipstick, a camera with some unusual selfies, and some other random things in the pockets. It was a nice rugged Carhartt jacket. To this day, my friend still uses it. I found out my GF was cheating on me, so I moved out. I kept my copy of the apartment key for a while after, and I'd go over when she wasn't home and pass small but worthwhile amounts of urine into her collection of shoes and swirl the toilet with both toothbrushes by the bathroom sink. A friend of mine had been seriously third-wheeling me with a certain girl that I was into. I asked why, and he said it was fair game. May the best man win. So I decided to find him another suitable partner. I went on to Omegle, typed gay into preferences, met a slew of lovely middle-aged men who wanted my K.I.K. and thus gave them his. He received pictures of butts, D's, and 44-year-old men wanting to let daddy see you. In my eyes, justice was served finally. No regrets. I got in a fight with one of my friends when I was about 12 or so. We were in a heated argument, and I decided enough is enough, so I picked up some seaweed with a stick from the nearby creek and threw that crap on her head. Oh, sweet justice. My friend's ex. She was quite the bee and deserved to be dumped. She treated my friend like crap and saw him as nothing more than a pair of lips. After they broke up, she refused to talk to us. Fast forward two months, she's still a bit bitter at most of our group, with the exception of me. She wanted me. So she asks me out. That's when I came up with a brilliant plan. In order to put as much distance between her and me, along with making her feel extremely uncomfortable, we decided that everyone would just so conveniently be at the movie theater when we were on our date. This included her ex and his current GF. Look on her face when she was essentially flash mobbed and completely ignored for the night was priceless. There was a teacher that I hated in middle school, and he hated me just as much. One day I noticed that one of the magazines in our classroom had his address on it. I wrote it down and waited until summer vacation so it would be less suspicious. 
I went to Borders and got a bunch of magazine subscription inserts and had a close friend who went to another school fill them out with his information. I checked the bill me later and sent them out. When I got back to school the next year, I could tell he suspected me but couldn't prove it, and I was happy because I didn't have any classes with him anymore. My ex said she'd call the cops on me for confronting her repeatedly about having stolen and rehoming my cat. So I went home and called the cops on her. Found out what she did with my cat after that. My younger sister is a huge pain, always got me in trouble. I took her Harry Potter books, scribbled out Snape's name, and wrote Alan Rickman in every instance. I think she still cries about it. About a month ago, I found out my coworker, a good friend of mine, was cheating with my GF at the time. Teamed up with a few other work buddies and decided to teach him a lesson. We went to a Korean mart and bought two frozen raw fishes. With the help of one of my buddies, I was able to get a hold of his car keys, so we hid one of those two fish we bought earlier in a place which would be pretty obvious and easy to notice, and we duct taped the other fish underneath his passenger side seat. He did find one of the fish and was pretty mad with us. Here's the sweet revenge, though. He kept complaining that he just couldn't get rid of the fish smell from his car even though he cleaned his car with shampoo, and has used all kinds of car scent. I quit that work a few days after, so I don't know if he found the other fish yet. The bully who played a large part in my anorexia asking me out in college not realizing who I was. I shot him down hard and told him how he affected me. He scoffed it off but looked really sad every time he saw me. Back in high school, the senior football players egged my dog. She was outside, house, and car. I had a few bros over and we ended up inviting some of the prettier girls from my school over. Football players didn't approve of them being at my house and drove by egging and yelled F you at me. They also egged the girls' cars that were at my house. I felt embarrassed that this happened to them at my house. I knew which car they drove because of the yelling idiot and recognized the car. My friend and I hopped in my car and bought around 100 eggs to take our revenge. We hit the driver's house first and all of his friend's cars parked around the house. Then we went out looking for them, ended up meeting them on your average two-way street, leaned out the window and absolutely pelted them while we were both heading opposite ways. They got out and yelled and I stuck my middle finger out the window and we rode into the distance. It didn't cause any problems to the girls or myself after that. I was in the locker room in high school gym class, hiding in the back because I had to call my mother about something ASAP. Just as I'm listening to the recording, this kid, who had been a longtime bully to me, came over and started taunting me with his usual threats. As I was leaving the message, in which I did not want him taunting me in the background, I kicked him as hard as I could. I aimed for his stomach, but he reacted and somehow managed to get himself kicked in the balls instead. He looked at me in shock and amusement and ran away. I managed to finish the message without faltering once. Not long after this, I happened to be at the DMV with the same kid and both of our fathers, both of us testing to get our permits. I passed. He failed. Extra karma. B. Someone at my apartment complex kept stealing our newspaper. One Sunday, I got up very early, brought in the Sunday paper, took it out of its colored bag, took the Saturday paper that I had filled full of baby powder, put it in the Sunday paper bag, and put it back outside the door. No one ever stole my paper again. This isn't that great, but I worked as a contractor helping IT set up hardware for a branch of hospitals. Almost everyone was easy to get along with, but one of the contractors treated me like I was an idiot because I was the only one there without any formal IT training. It was a daily explanation of something very simple that I already understood. Okay, C-dubs 2, you know how to put a USB in, right? Laughs. Right. Well, okay, but just in case you forgot, let me show you. Dude, we did not have time for this ego trip BS. I just kept my mouth shut and worked my butt off for the length of the contract. A few months later, I was rehired by the same IT team. They wanted me to go through the previous contractor we had that summer and pick out which ones to help out with our project. Guess who didn't get hired? Driving home around 2 in the morning. Two cars ahead of me, one is clearly giving the other car a hard time. Tailgating him, cutting him off, windows open and he's yelling, tame other guy. I catch up at the light and see a scared older man, 70 plus, getting verbally cussed out by this kid. Now, I'm totally sober and I know that cops hang out in the back of the parking lot at work. <laughs> they were security guards on their off hours. I get the punk's attention and he starts harassing me. One mile to go, cussing at me, trying to cut me off. I pull into the parking lot, he follows. Whip down to the back and yep, 
There's the cop. Lights come on. Both of us get pulled over. Other guy is screaming and I only have to explain for 30 seconds what happened. I leave the scene like I did my good deed for the day. TLDR, saved old man from being harassed, cops pull over and arrest the right guy. Ten months, I had the worst roommate ever, a 40-year-old guy who acted like he was 21. His parents support him and pay for his condo, which I rented a room in with no lease. As such, I had no tenant's rights, which he took advantage of. He was loud, drunk, drugged out, and yelling racial obscenities at the TV daily. He was constantly forcing me to listen to his rants about things he had no real knowledge about. This guy was the most spoiled, entitled, inconsiderate, narcissistic person I have ever met. The day I was supposed to move out, he was passed the F out from a days-long alcohol and drug binge. I moved all my stuff into the truck and was driving off when it hit me. There was a possum carcass on the side of the road near the condo. I went back up, grabbed his barbecue tongs in a bag, and picked up that carcass. I walked back up again, went in, opened the door to his room, and whipped that carcass onto his bed then walked out of that place for the last time. He never even stirred as the dead possum, rotting and baked by the sun, landed next to him with a sickening plop. He deserves worse, actually, but I did what I could. This isn't as clever or conniving as some on here, but it still ranks as the number one top spot for my best revenge moment. I was 13 and was reclining on a beach chair. This boy about my age and his younger friend, who I'd known for about a week, were standing behind me and kept messing with the chair and wouldn't stop when I asked them to. Him and his friend were classic little bratty redneck children. The younger one had a rat tail mullet, relevant for later. And the entire time I'd known them, they were spouting off about how boys were doing this, but girls couldn't do that because they were girls, stuff like that. The last time they messed with my chair, I stood up, spun around, and looked the bigger one dead in the eye and told him he better stop. He looked right at me with a smirk on his face and asked, What are you going to do about it? As soon as the words left his mouth, I punched him dead in the eye and grabbed the younger kid's rat tail mullet and yanked it so hard he fell to the ground. Then I sat back down. Both started crying almost immediately and didn't mess with me again. Eight years later, and it's still the best feeling of revenge I've ever had. Was staying at my girlfriend's house, and a couple houses away was a group of people who would bend late into the night, go out, and then begin bending again. One night, after having a very interrupted sleep, I overheard one of the girls in the house loudly ordering pizza to an all-night place in the cross. This is in Sydney. She gave her credit card number, and I quickly copied it down. The next day, I went on a flower delivery site and delivered an $80 bouquet to the four houses around the house on either side of the street with a note saying, Sorry for the noise. We apologize and won't do it again. They've been quiet ever since. In eighth grade, I was hanging with two of my friends at the local HS. We just finished playing a pickup game of football. As we were walking to the bathrooms, I saw what I thought was a friend and said, Hey man, what's up? We had played Pop Warner together for years, so I knew him. He came out acting really tough and strange. Then about seven other black dudes came out with him. I guess he joined a gang over the summer. Anyway, they proceeded to jump me and beat the crap out of me while the friends I was with just stood there and watched. I'm not friends with them anymore, lol. It was a long, bloody walk home I never forgot about. Anyway, football season came around and look who was on my team. We get paired together in a drill where one person holds the football and another person tackles, both people laying flat on their back. Coach blew the whistle and I never ran so hard in my life. I trucked the crap out of him to the point I cracked his helmet and he cried like a little girl. I stood over him and said, where's your gang now? He showed me mad respect after that, never said a word to me. To this day, I still think about how awesome it felt. I was once staying at a friend's house in the seventh grade. His older sister thought it would be a good idea to embarrass him in front of me by cracking an egg over his head from the top of the balcony when we got home from school. My friend was infuriated and woke me up at 5 a.m. the next morning, went into the kitchen, and started whisking a bowl of eggs. Five minutes and five eggs later, we went downstairs to his sister's room where he poured the whole bowl of whisked egg onto her face. The look of horror as she woke up with her face covered in egg was probably one of the funnest things I have seen in my entire life. To this day, she has never effed with him again. I was bullied a lot in middle school because, you know, middle school. I was a quiet, unassuming, itty-bitty girl who got along with the teachers and always did my homework slash answered questions slash blah blah blah. One day in class, this kid was being a D and throwing his stuff at me. Whatever, the usual. 
But when the teacher is turned away, I whip an eraser, one of his that he had thrown, at this kid's face and hit him right in the middle of his effing forehead. He's stunned for a second and then tries to get me in trouble. B can't do that crap because A, it is his eraser, and 2, no one believed that I would do something like that. Made my day. It won't sound that great, but it was great to me. I was dating and living with this guy, only for about six months, but in that time he cheated on me repeatedly. I know, shouldn't have stayed. Manipulated me, tried to control me, had me paying for everything, had a job for only a brief two months, and in the end started hitting me. Oddly enough, he broke up with me. So I got an apartment of my own and got all my crap out. Another ordeal. A few months later, I'm much happier and relieved to have gotten away from that experience. Me and my friend are watching a movie at about 2 in the morning when there's a knock on the door. I go to answer it, and F-Face is there. He's crying, and his pupils are huge, and he's acting weird. I asked him if he was tripping, and he said he'd eaten a lot of shrooms. Then he said he just needed to talk to me. It was winter, it was raining outside, and it couldn't have been better. I just slammed the door in his face, deadbolted it, and went back upstairs and had a good laugh with my friend. It just felt good to do that. It felt like some sort of revenge to me. It was satisfying, to say the least. In sixth grade, I was bullied by basically my entire class. We had homerooms that would travel around together all day. There was one particular kid who was especially nasty. He was the athletic jock type and caused some emotional scarring because I had never been made fun of before sixth grade. Fast forward to high school when the school had a dodgeball tournament. A lot of the teams dressed up in uniforms, and my team decided our uniform would be dresses. I'm a male. The jocks team was our first match. We proceeded to annihilate them. Me getting out five of the six people on the team, including the butt jock. While I was wearing a low-cut dress. Probably won't get red, but here goes. In middle school, I was kind of the ugly duckling. I had teeth too big and my smile was awful. No boobs, didn't know how to dress, horrible haircuts, no idea how to put makeup on. I also had a huge crush on this kid, let's call him Mike. So Mike, from 6th to 8th grade, wouldn't give me the time of day. Made fun of me behind my back, laughed in my face, but awkward me still wanted to date him. Got sent to summer school in between 8th and 9th grade, where I proceeded to make friends with one of the more popular kids in my soon-to-be high school. Over the summer, I grew into my teeth, got boobs, new clothes, and learned makeup. Started freshman year looking like a different person. Mike saw me and ended up cornering me in the hallway where we had a conversation where he started telling me how good I looked and asked me out. Because of the confidence of being friends with some of the cool kids, I laughed in his face. Told him he had his chance and lost it. That was his own fault and I walked away smiling. To this day, 17 years later, that's all one of my favorite memories of high school. Being able to turn down my crush because I was hot and he had missed out. Revenge is sweet. Edited the random Joe out as well as fixed my spelling. Wow, that was bad, lol. Last year, the kid who sat behind me in math copied my answers for the last three tests. I told him to stop when I found out, and he lashed out on me. So during the exam, I caught him taking my answers. So I started to put the wrong answers. At the end, he handed it in, and while walking back to his seat, I erased every answer I put in and looked him dead in the eye while doing it. Not me, but my good friend got married to a guy that she met online. He was originally from the town we lived in, but he was stationed at a naval base in Washington State at the time. She found out that he cheated on her, and she went effing insane. She hopped in her car and drove from Iowa to Washington straight through. When she arrived in town, she was even more crazed and high on caffeine, and she went to his house and drove straight through his garage door. He was at work at the time, and by the time he got home, she had systematically destroyed every single thing he owned. Right down to taking every single CD out of its case and breaking it in half. She also used a can of spray paint to write cheater on every surface. The level of damage was outrageous. There really wasn't anything salvageable. Best part? Those effers are still married. Not my personal revenge, but the older brother of a good friend of mine. He was a freshman in college and was in band slash on drumline. On a long bus ride, the upperclassmen all decided to lock him in the bus bathroom. They had peed everywhere and it was horribly disgusting. So the next time they all took a trip, he made cookies but put laxatives in them and gave them out to all the upperclassmen. Needless to say, he was never effed with again. Please leave your story in the comments. I would love to make a video on them in the future. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe.